at some point in our life, we will experience the loss of a loved one and we'll grieve that loss, but we might not know exactly how to handle the ups and downs that come with this. So what are some healthy ways to go through the grieving process? Well, joining me to share some advice on this is Siobhan Parr, who is a pastor of church life at Lethbridge Evangelical Free Church and Joanne Penner Heron. Together they lead the Grief, Share, Loss and Support Group. Ladies, welcome to Bridge City News. Great to have you on this morning. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Absolutely. Thank okay, you. so first off, can you maybe give us a snapshot of what your Grief Share Support Group is about and what people would experience if they dropped into one of your gatherings? Sure. So Grief Share is a group faith-based program, and it's offered to anyone who has who has who is grieving the loss of a loved one through death. It is a 13-week program with 13 sessions. And when you come to this group, uh, you come to look for support. We offer care, encouragement, lots of listening. Uh, videos are offered. First of all, there are three parts to each week. There's a video produced by Church Initiative, which has excellent mm -hmm. counselors, pastors, and people speaking of their experiences during grief. And then there's a discussion time about the video. So we all share together our own emotional pain and uh, things we are, are working through. And then following that, each participant goes home with a workbook and they are reflect on questions each week and come back and we carry on to another area of grief. So it's a sharing of our loss and it's faith-based, which gives us a very strong faith support to build our healing upon. Right, at 13 weeks, okay, that's a long yes. process there. All right. It is fairly. Okay, how, how often do you have these, uh, these, these sessions, I guess? Well, we have them as needed. I would like to suggest. Mm. So there are other churches in town who run the Grief Share program as well, and we try not to overlap and offer them at the same time. So we are in conversation with them, and if you're offering it one semester, then we won't. So it's a little unpredictable to just say actual times and schedules, but if you go on the website, the griefshare.org website, you can see what's offered in Lethbridge, each semester and people mm -hmm. can go wherever they like. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if any- This is our first one for this year. Oh, mm -hmm. okay, no, good to know. And of course the year just started, so that makes sense. Yes. So, <laughs> so if any of our viewers would like to participate in a grief share support group, how and when can they do that? So you're mentioning mm -hmm. the website is a great way, great place no, to yeah. start. The, the website is the, um, is, is the key as well, because it's offered not just in our church or, or in Lethbridge, but in churches across the country as well. So wherever you might be, go to griefshare.org and you can type in your location there and it will come up with a listing of all of the closest grief share groups that are available to you that you might be able to get connected with. Ours is starting January 22nd at 1 p.m. and we're, we're looking forward to that. You can also access information on our own church website mm -hmm. as well. So efreelethbridge.ca and get details there. Okay, no, that's great to know. Um, do you offer uh, remotely? I mean, 1 p.m. is a little bit, it, it can be a hard time to get there. Are these one hour sessions you may have mentioned already? They're, they're two hour okay. sessions, at least because there's time for the video and the discussion and, and joining together as well. There are some options to do groups online. Our current uh, version of that is to do it completely in person, um, but it's something that we might be looking at in the future as well, just, yeah. just as times change. But okay. the, the, the community and fellowship is very important part of it as, as well. So yeah. so we're leaning into the, the in-person. That really makes sense and building those connections 100%. So now I've heard that grief has several stages that we tend to go through. So can you maybe share uh, those with us there are there's there's um five common stages of grief it's from the kubler ross mm -hmm. um her book um came out in the 60s yeah. on death Psychology, and dying yes <laughs> and, and it's it's really set the stage for for the different phases originally it was thought that that it was maybe a linear progression is is that you go through each one individually but we understand it more of 
um, it, it, it's like in waves. Grief comes in in waves. So the, the the standard five that we're looking at is denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and acceptance. But there could be times, you know, you, you've come to the point of, of acceptance, but then anger creeps up as well. So it's it, it's a process where mm -hmm. where different things can pop up at different times as well. But those are the traditional ones that that will be. Um, dealing with and, and understanding mm -hmm. and working through as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and of course, they do say that people grieve in different ways. And some people are more emotional. Some like to be kind of left alone. Others maybe need to be around people, right? So, I mean, it, there's no <laughs> a scenario where everyone goes through this the same way, right? Mm -hmm. No, it's very unpredictable and very unique and individual. Mm. And we grieve depending on our age, our stage, our, um, our, the extent of our relationships. We deal according to personality, as you just suggested. We can be external grievers and wear our grief very uh, overtly. Mm -hmm. We can be internal grievers and um, manage our grief differently. So even in one household, you could have two or three or four people all grieving somewhat differently. And to understand that is really helpful. It's helpful to support each other and it's helpful to walk through the whole process to health at the end of it all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And uh, I mean, we've heard also that regret is a common emotion in the grief process. So why would that be? With, with regrets, it, it's not just sadness and grief. Grief brings out many emotions, and some of those might come from the things that that you didn't say to the person while they were alive, the the things that that you wish you would have done if you just had one more moment with them. What would change, or maybe the actions, um, um, you know, that that led to their death. There there could be some regrets around that. You know, if I'd picked up that phone call, if I'd just done this one thing. Um, that that's what makes it quite complex and hard to deal with by yourself as well. And 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 this process it, it helps to be able to talk about things, to normalize just the, the amount of intense emotions that people could be feeling. Oh, a hundred percent. And helps us learn how to man I'm sorry, helps us learn how to manage feelings of guilt mm -hmm. that can arise from all of these if onlys, if only yeah. I had. And then guilt ensues yeah. sometimes after that. Yeah. Mm -hmm guilt, regret, and I would imagine loneliness yes. is often an issue mm -hmm. that's part of the grieving mm -hmm. process mm -hmm. as well, right? So yeah. what, what are maybe some unhealthy methods that people use to deal with their grief? And is there a way that we can help someone who's maybe spiraling downward? Mm -hmm. So the part of grief is is the loneliness, as, as you mentioned. You're going to experience a loneliness because it's the loss of someone that you loved in in your life mm -hmm. in, in this in this grief that we're we're dealing with and so uh, a lot of times for spouses as well there's a there's a definite loss of someone who was there with them perhaps all the time throughout throughout their lifetime when it changes to so so the loneliness is going to be normal but then when it becomes unhealthy we see extreme isolation cutting yourself off from others and those other connections as well. Sometimes you, you need to be alone. Sometimes you, you need to have that time to yourself to be able to cry. But when it becomes withdrawing from the world, that, that starts to become unhealthy. Other methods then, then that come in is, is someone may try and numb the pain that they're feeling through the use of substances to escape some of the things that, that they're mm -hmm. feeling. Um, which you can understand, but it, it can spiral um, wrong very quickly. So in those circumstances, we ask that people reach out for help. And if they're not able to, to reach out themselves, that the friends and family mm -hmm. are able to, to come alongside them and, and to just spend time with them, to, to encourage them to get the help, to increase the connections that they have with others so that the unhealthy <laughs> methods aren't the primary methods that people turn to. Right. It's got to be such a balancing act because at the same time, you should never tell someone who's grieving that they should be over it by now, right? <laughs> That's very right. Very yeah. right. Yeah. Yes. So with that said, when friends and relatives are maybe grieving, 
oftentimes we don't know what to say or what to do. That's so, right. That's... So what are some do's and don'ts of, of how to, you know, kind of talk to somebody who is going through this? Well, probably the most important thing we can do is to just think before we speak uh, and listen a lot. Mm -hmm. A touch, a hug, if that's appropriate and accepted, is really welcome mm -hmm. to let them know we are here, that we are empathetic, but to listen before we speak. And sometimes the only, um, so a very neutral but caring thing to say is, I'm just so sorry mm -hmm. for your loss and I have no words. I loved your partner. I loved your person or I didn't know them very well, but I've heard such good things. Mm -hmm. I am so sorry. And probably contrasted to that would be um, a very um, unhelpful response might be, oh, I know just how you're feeling. I went through this. I'm and, and while that may have threads of truth, we do not know how somebody else is feeling. So to impose and suggest that we do is not helpful because nobody really understands our particular, mm. our particular pain. And so it's, um, it's something that, um, that it takes some thought. I think we, we just need to not believe that we have the answers for somebody who's grieving, but we need to learn with them, walk alongside. Another thing that's very helpful is to is to not pretend we know what they need uh, and just bring over, you know, the 15th lasagna, which is really tasty, but but that's a lot of food possibly. Mm. Um, and just say, I'll call you next week and check in and see what you need then. Um, and there are varieties of ways. Um, how would you like me to come and vacuum your home on Friday? Would mm -hmm. that be helpful? And instead of presuming that we know what people need. So yeah. uh, it's a very empathetic response and a listening response more than anything. Let them talk about their loved one. They need to. They need to talk a lot about their loved one. And we need to listen. That's mm -hmm. really so those are some good. helpful yeah. things. Really yes. good yeah. advice there. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. Now, what advice might you have for people who don't seem to be able to move on with the new normal in their life and they seem kind of stuck in constant grief? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there's no real timeline, right? Everybody's different. That's right. Yeah. 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 The, it's different for each person. It, yeah. it really is. It, it's different for each person. And, and what a, a new normal may may look like uh, to go back to discover what that might be what you're what the person is 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 looking for they, they might not know that we're trying to help them see is that eventually they might be able to come to a place where the feelings that they're experiencing from the loss are less overwhelming at that time and and that might be the the, the new normal for them it yeah. may be but in terms of getting unstuck, mm. I think to help people move forward with a purpose. Mm. And Grief Share is very good for that. We can address issues that might be holding us back. And, um, you know, there's a lovely, lovely saying that I, I really um, have used a lot in my own life. And that is that memories are not meant to hold us hostage. Mm. So we are in the same circle of, of self-muddling, but they're meant to transform us. And so you move forward with purpose in the in this whole process of transformation. So and then that becomes a new normal that you can greet and embrace and live with. But but we need support for that. Mm -hmm. And uh, grief share certainly helps support people in that position. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, is it helpful mm -hmm. for people to maybe write down their <laughs> thoughts and emotions in a journal? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Sure. I would suggest that journaling is integral to this program. And don't let anyone be um, kind of scared off by that at all, if you haven't been writing. But um, we each receive a participant workbook. Mm -hmm. And in that workbook, there is space to write down your own thoughts and um, come back to the class with what you've written. You don't need to share it with anybody at all, but it helps us to sort through and clarify our emotions. And if we can clarify with a writing process, that can be the most healing thing. And we never really recognize 
our pain and the circle of chaos so we see it on paper mm -hmm. and uh, we can move through then it gives us ideas for how to move through that mm -hmm. so journaling is is really a key thing wouldn't you I, say I love it. Mm -hmm. it, it it gives a way to get all of the emotions out mm -hmm. you, you don't have to um stop your 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 thoughts or regulate mm -hmm. you, you just you just put it put it all onto the page everything that that you're thinking that you're feeling that you're going through and it it helps to be able to to express that in, in your in your own way that, that you can hold privately as well you don't need mm -hmm. to 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 share that but it's important that it does mm -hmm. come out yeah mm -hmm. exactly i would imagine it's very therapeutic yes yeah yeah okay very mm -hmm. excellent uh, well, it looks like we're about out of time here but i really appreciate you ladies for for joining me today and, and talking about this Thank really you. hard Thank subject you. Yeah. It yeah. is, but it's also, uh, we can hold joy and sorrow mm. in two hands, and we can experience um, alternately, uh, as we move through this journey, less sorrow and more joy, and some days more sorrow and less joy. But if we understand the process of how to allow ourselves to embrace a new way of living and a new normal, mm -hmm. then uh, we come through whole on the other side. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. exactly. Well, Pastor mm -hmm. Siobhan and Joanne, thanks so much for joining me You're today. You're very welcome. You. You're very Thank welcome. You. Pastor Siobhan Parr and Joanne Panner-Heron lead the Grief Share Loss and Support Group at Lethbridge Evangelical Free Church. So great to have them on today. I'm Jeanette Roche. On behalf of all of us here at Bridge City News, thanks so much for watching. Thank you.